Welcome to the Elk Creek Candidates Forum, co-sponsored by the Canyon Courier and My Mountain Town. My name is Kristen, and I'm the West Metro Editor at Colorado Community Media, meaning that I have five newspapers. They're the Clear Creek Current, the Canyon Courier, the Golden Transcript, the Arvada Press, and the Jet Code. Sorry, the Jet Code Transcript. Um, I'll just go ahead and get started now. So a little bit about the election. Six people self-nominated to fill three seats on the Elk Creek Fire Protection District Board. The candidates are incumbents Chuck Newby and Sharon Woods, and the newcomers Dominique Devaney, Todd Wagner, Deborah McPhee, and Shannon Peterson. Shannon will be present tonight. The three, the three candidates with the most votes will serve four-year terms on the board. Elk Creek Fire Protection District incorporates most of Aspen Park, Conifer, and Pine Junction, and includes a small portion of Park County. The election will be in person from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on May 2nd at Elk Creek Fire Station 1. A little bit about how the forum is going to work. Uh, the questions we'll be asking today were decided by Canyon Courier editors. They were based on our own questions and those that were sent to us by readers. No one else but the Canyon Courier staff has seen the questions. Candidates will have two minutes to give opening statements, answer each question, and give closing statements. The order of opening and closing statements were decided uh, with a drawing. For the questions, candidates will answer questions in alphabetical order. They're seated in alphabetical order now. Each candidate will answer, oh, each candidate will have the opportunity to answer a question first, and the forum has to conclude at 8 p.m. Angela Bassano will be helping us keep time. Uh, she'll flash a card after a minute when there's 30 seconds left and at two minutes, which means stop talking. <laughs> uh, for the candidates, your opening statements should include who you are and why you're running, and your closing statement should be why people should vote for you. It should go without saying, but please don't make any disparaging remarks about other candidates. If you do, I will stop you. So let's just go ahead and get started with opening statements. Dominique is up first. From here? Do you need, do I need this? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, let's bring the mic to you. Awesome, thanks. Really loud. Um, excuse me for reading because I tend to wander. I want to start by saying thank you to each and every one of you for taking some time out of your day to come and meet myself and the other eligible electees who are running for the position of director at Elk Creek Fire. My name is Dominique Devaney. I have lived and worked in the Conifer and Evergreen community for over 20 years. I spent half my childhood running around the mountains and parks up here living with my dad. My younger sister and brother were some of the first students to graduate from Conifer High School. My husband, Kevin, is a volunteer firefighter for Elk Creek and has been for over 14 years. And we are raising three amazing children in this community. Some of my first volunteer service hours were spent making sandwiches and serving the firefighters and volunteers of the High Meadow, Snake Inn, and Hayman fires. My I feel that my experience as the administrative and HR manager and special projects coordinator for Evergreen Metropolitan did. <clears throat> Evergreen Metropolitan District, which is the water and wastewater utility in Evergreen, gives me special insight into how Elk Creek Fire Department fundamentally operates. As a Title 32 special district, it is local governance at its finest, meeting the community with direct impact. I oversee the budgets and audit processes for two special districts in the Evergreen area with a combined asset, revenue, and resources of over 20 million. I have experience in grant administration, special district loan financing, FEMA cybersecurity, and special district leadership training. With all of this experience combined, my ability to listen and meet people where they are will provide you with the best representation in Elk Creek with the strong leadership it needs in the coming years. I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you. Up next is Todd. Good evening, my name is Todd Wagner. Um, thank you for coming and appreciate seeing everybody here. Um, I have been in the community for 32 years. Um, I own a business here in the, uh, in the area. Raised three children um, in this community. 
I also volunteered with Elk Creek for over eight years. And kids are out of the nest now and figured I'd join back in and try and help the community. I think there's a lot of decisions that need to be made here um, in the future coming. And I think that transparency and uh, fiscal responsibility is, is key. And uh, I would look forward to uh, receiving your vote. Uh, Deb? Hi there, uh, my name is Deb McPhee, and I also have lived in the community for 20 some years. Um, I don't have any affiliation with the fire department. I'm a retired accountant and tax lawyer. I spent 20 some years in those fields working in a big six accounting firm and law firms out of New York and Philadelphia. Um, my husband and I raised our two children in this community. They are now in college, so like Todd, I'm an empty nester. I know that the district is facing some big financial decisions in this election that impact all of us. So in a sense, I'm running to represent property owners, that we get the best possible fire district, but that we do it in a financially responsible way because we're probably all facing increased taxes regardless with the reassessments coming up. Anyway, thank you for coming out tonight, and I hope you'll give me your vote. Hi, my name is uh, Chuck Newby. Um, a little bit about me, I'm a Navy brat, and I was born in San Diego, but I have lived uh, all over the U.S. Uh, I'm an Army veteran. I spent uh, the better part of 1971 and 72 in the Republic of uh, Korea leading a uh, nuclear support team. I'm a graduate of San Diego State University, uh, and I spent a 40 plus year career as a communication systems uh, engineering executive. Uh, I'm running for re-election to the board uh, at uh, Air Creek, and one of the cr uh, reasons that I'm running is that uh, uh, in the upcoming election, we probably will be uh, uh, facing or uh, having uh, on the ballot uh, several ballot issues. Uh, regarding uh, consolidation or, or merger of the fire district. Uh, at this point, I feel that uh, the uh, voters have not been given the information that uh, they need really to, uh, to make that sort of decision. And uh, the, the information that we do need is uh, a, cr a mission critical um, needs assessment a set of operational business plans and uh, projected uh, budget. And so if, uh, if you vote for me, if you like me or we like me, uh, I will uh, fight hard to make sure that uh, the citizens get all of the information they need uh, to make this uh, critical decision. Thank you for coming out tonight. And then, uh, Sharon. Hi, everybody. My name is Sharon Woods. I am also running for re-election, and thank everybody for being here. Thank the sponsors for putting this together. I didn't move here until 2013, December 29th, to be exact, to a foot of snow in a very steep driveway. In 2017, I began attending the fire board meetings just to find out what was going on. 2018, the president of the board and I presented to Jefferson County Planting planning commission about the wildfire risk in our area that still exists today. In 2020, I actually joined the board and was nominated to be the treasurer of the board. My message to everyone is we need sustainability, and that means making sure we have the right equipment, the right people, the right volunteers, and the right training to continue to operate. Elk Creek Fire Community, is a very, connects with the community. They have a chipping program that was full in 45 minutes. They have CPR classes. They have a Community Connect app that you can register in. They have an ambassador program. They have official address signs for your house so they can always find it in an emergency. And they do home assessments. So all those things are important. Other activities that I do, I volunteer on a company that wants to bring fiber optic to my neighborhood. I spent a year on the planning commission, so I know how that works. 
and I am on the consolidation committee. So unlike Chuck, I am in favor of consolidation and I'm honored to be reelected to the fire board. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and get started with the questions. So like I said, we'll be going in alphabetical order so the candidates can just pass the mic down. Um, so our first question is, what experience or expertise would you bring to the Elk Creek Board, and do you have any conflicts of interest when it comes to serving on the board? As I stated in my opening statements, I've worked for Evergreen Metropolitan District for almost a decade. I have experience in economics, um, human resources administration, public administration, I have served time at the U.S. and local senates as a senator understudy, basically a runner. Um, this community, and in particular Elk Creek Fire Department, is so very important to all of us, and seeing the experience that I have in grant processing through FEMA and DOLA. Um, I have experience in SDF loan processing for developmental funds with the state. Um, I am very familiar with special district requirements for everything from elections to transparency to budgets and audits. Special districts are, are different and they are special and that is where my career has led me to be heavily involved. Um, we have seen significant income and significant expense growth across the board for all special districts, in particular those districts that receive tax revenue. Elk Creek is very dependent on its tax revenue and with the coming changes on TABOR and asset and assessments, it is so very important going forward that there is strong awareness of the budget, which I have in-depth experience in, from large budgets to small budgets. Um, and that's about it. Thank you. Oh, and I have no, I mean, my husband's a retired active firefighter, but fundamentally no conflict of interest. <coughs> um, so the expertise that I would bring is that I have a degree in accounting and a law degree, and I spent 20 plus years working in tax litigation and tax law. Um, I can read a financial statement, balance sheet, um, so I have some financial acumen. That's probably the expertise that I would bring, and also just the perspective of a resident homeowner in Conifer for 20 plus years, knowing what the environment is like, knowing my neighbors, and I have no conflict of interest at all. Um. <clears throat> I, I bring to uh, uh, to the uh, Elk Creek um, uh, Fire District uh, Board of Directors uh, my experience over with over 40 years of managing uh, technical teams. So I understand uh, how not only how to read a budget, how to stick to a budget, uh, how to generate a budget, but I also know how to manage uh, complex uh, uh, situations and. Um, and understand uh, needs and, um, and, and how to measure performance. Uh, uh, my experience so far on the board has been uh, a, a bit mixed, and, and that is because I, I feel that uh, we are really not getting uh, the uh, information and the direction that we need uh, as a, um, a board of directors in, in order to uh, manage this fire district going forward. Uh, as I said, uh, there um, are a number of issues that are going to be facing the voters here coming up in November. Uh, the intent is to put um, uh, at least uh, three ballot measures uh, on the November ballot. And uh, one of them may be a uh, mill levy increase up to about 16 mills uh, on your tax bill. Uh, so, uh, I am uh, looking for uh, uh, more information from the uh, three fire chiefs that proposed this uh, so-called merger or consolidation 
And um, again, I will work to uh, make sure that the voters get that information. Uh, and right now, they are, they are not getting the information I feel that they need. And as far as conflict of interest, no, I have no conflict of interest. The things that I can bring to the board, um, like I mentioned before, I, I've owned a business in the community for 17 years. So I understand um, financials and running a budget and keeping all the things that we need in front of us so that we can get the jobs done that we need to get done. Um, I also volunteered with Elk Creek and understand the fire service in many aspects, not all of them by any means. Um, and I think that there's a lot of, like Chuck had mentioned, there's a lot of uh, things that are coming towards us. And financially, I think we need to really um, make sure that we're not spending more than we need to be, but yet also making sure that we keep everything um, running flawlessly. Um, this community is a very, uh, I should say this district is a very big district and it needs a lot of resources. Um, the other departments around the area also are lacking resources as well. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, the consolidation is, I think at this point, um, something everybody's looking at. I think that it really needs to be um, a good, solid plan put forth, and we understand exactly what it's going to cost the community, because going after additional tax dollars every year or two um, seems to be uh, a not a very good plan. So I would hope that we have a very good plan if this is the, the way that it's going to move forward and know exactly what the community and the taxpayers are going to be forced, are faced with. Um, thank you. Thank you, sorry. I'm at the end. I've been told I'm at the end. So what I bring to the board is, although I haven't lived in the community for 20 plus years, like a lot of people up here, I've lived here for the last nine and a half years. So I do have some concept of what's going on. I have three years on the current board, and I am asking for re-election to another four-year term. I am an accountant. I have a master's in finance. And for the last three years, every month, I report against a budget. The budget for the property taxes comes down from Jefferson County. It represents over 60% of our revenue. So it is a very important number. And something to note is that the revenue budget handed down from Jeffco in 2023 is less than the revenue budget we had in 2022. So it's important that we manage expenses and that is something that I report on every month, both monthly and year-to-date budget expenses. As far as the consolidation, I'm going to share some statistics, statistics really quick. In Elk Creek, 64% say fire risk has increased. 73% concerned about wildfire. 88% approve of the job the department is doing. 58% say that, that Elk Creek is fiscally responsible, and they are. 18% say that we don't have the resources we need. We need more resources and better resources. 81% said that they would vote in November of 2023. 91% said they'll vote in November. We will be holding, we will actually be holding meetings at Elk Creek Fire Station 1 on the 18th of April to discuss and tell you what consolidation is all about. So we will be providing the community with the information that they need. Thank you very much. So to start us off with the next question, which is the Elk Creek Fire Protection District Board is considering consolidating with the Inter Canyon and North Fork Fire Departments. 
What is the biggest asset to such a merger, and what is the biggest barrier? So I actually read the two inches of report on this consolidation, a proposed consolidation, believe it or not. Free time on my hands with the kids in college. Um, I keep reading conclusory statements about how consolidation is going to be a benefit, but I keep not hearing how or why. And as an accountant and as a lawyer, I know that consolidation is going to require a lot of lawyer fees, a lot of administration fees, probably consulting fees. And what do we give up? Sovereignty in Elk Creek. We merge with other districts that have different populations, different incident occurrences. It's confusing to me why that would be better for Elk Creek. We already have our hands full with most of the incidents in terms of EMS and in terms of fire. And that's, that's a big draw on our resources. And so the idea of taking on a geographic area that's probably triple, if not quadruple, as big as we are now, I'm just not convinced, to be honest with you. I'm not sure what the upside is. I can see upsides in coordination and cooperation, and in that, I would advocate for that, where that makes sense. But a full-on merger, it just seems like it, it might not make a lot of sense from my perspective at this point. I can be convinced otherwise, but after reading this two-inch thick paper, I'm not there. So, um, I also have been looking into the uh, fors and against uh, a consolidation or merger. And when we look at the demographics of the three uh, districts, um, they're, they're quite, there are quite stark differences. Uh, we look at Elk Creek uh, with a population of 17,000, Intercan with a population of 5,250, and then North Fork with a population of 1,700. And if you look at the geographic area, the, uh, the geographic areas are 98 square miles, 52 square miles, and 248 square miles, respectively. And then when you look at the uh, amount of tax revenue generated in each district, um, uh, Elk Creek, last year, the budget was uh, $5,800,000. Inner Canyon was $2.3 million. And North Fork was $450,000. Uh, something is um, uh, very uh, out of sync here between the three districts. Uh, Elk Creek is a very rich, uh, very high, high population density, very tax revenue rich district. The other two districts are less so. North Fork is, uh, is very poor in resources, has lots of national forests, and so forth. So uh, it, the, we, as citizens, are not getting the information that we need to make the decision uh, for going forward with, with consolidation or not. So what I'm asking for, and what I have been asking for, is for the chiefs in the fire districts to come forward with that information in a, in a user-friendly, in a community-friendly way. So far, we're not getting that. Can you repeat the question, please? Um, so to repeat, the question is, the Elk Creek Fire Protection District Board is considering consolidating with the Inner Canyon and North Fork Fire Departments. What is the biggest asset to such a merger, and what is the biggest barrier? So the biggest asset, um, in my opinion, would be Elk Creek, because they are the largest department. They have the most resources. Um, the most paid people. I think Inner Canyon only has a few paid people, if I remember correctly. Um, North Fork, I think, only has maybe one or two. So Elk Creek would be the biggest asset going into that merger. Um, the biggest negative would 
probably be North Fork because they have the least amount of resources to put forth towards the merger. Okay, as it was stated earlier, I am on the Elk Creek Board currently, as is Director Navy. So I am also on the Consolidation Committee. And what we get with Consolidation, the assets that we get, is none of the stations go away. Everybody's stations stay. The new district would work toward a 24 by 7 paid firefighters at one station in each of what are now the three districts. One central dispatch system means that when someone in any part of the district calls 911, there is one dispatch system to send the closest fire engine, the closest ambulance to where you live. So response time would be most likely reduced. There would be a consistent mill levy. It has been discussed and the survey that we gave to the people said that they would support 16 mills. Each and every district took that survey and the people said they would support 16 mills. It makes $10.24 different on my property tax. So I'm perfectly happy to spend another $10.24 a month. Pool resources for volunteers means there's no competition for volunteers. So we have a better chance of retaining and recruiting volunteers. I see those all as very big assets. The resources all are all not gonna come from Elk Creek, they're gonna come from all parts of the district. Thank you. For me, looking at <laughs> I read the two inches of documents as well. Um, there's a lot of detailed information in there from the outside. I don't sit on the board. There's a lot of missing pieces, so I would like to see more. But fundamentally, I have been involved in multiple consolidations of special districts. And one of the foundational reasons for consolidation is the elimination of duplication of services. By consolidating all three districts, you are single streaming, your firefighters, your management, your administration, your billing processes, your revenue, all of your equipment and maintenance, and it's all housed together. What you may or may not know as constituents is that there are already in place several IGAs between Inner Canyon and Evergreen, or Elk Creek and North Fork for cooperative services and managed programs. They are already training, operating in a capacity of mutual agreement. The biggest asset to me would be the ability to expand the capital profile and provide housing and support for the entire area. For those of you who are familiar with our wildland fires, a lot of them up here started closer in North Forks area. Um, the Lower North Fork Fire, which was the deadliest fire in Colorado, started in their neck of the woods and worked its way up into Elk Creek's area. We have a huge risk on our back door with the amount of wildland and natural forest down, national forest down there. So enabling a full consolidation would facilitate that. To me, the biggest concern is the expense that goes into it. There is a lot of lawyer fees and administration and processes. But on the surface, from what I have experienced and what I have read, I feel that those in the long run will outweigh the negatives. The positives will outweigh the negatives. So Chuck will start us off for this next one. Since it is a big talking point in the community, this next question gives the candidates an opportunity to expand on the previous question, which was to weigh the pros and cons. What is your opinion on whether Elk Creek should consolidate with the other departments? Why or why, why, or why not? So if you have a question, was what I'm having a hard time hearing. What was that? Can you just talk to me? 
Sure. So, uh, what is your opinion on whether Elk Creek should consolidate with the other departments? Oh. Why or why not? Okay. So, uh, again, uh, I, I think the demographics between, uh, the difference in the demographics between the three districts really tells the story. Um, again, uh, Elk Creek is, is by far the most populous um, and, and, the, and the richest in terms of tax revenue. Uh, we have a 24-7 uh, 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 district uh, right now in terms of uh, paid staff. Uh, North Fork and uh, Inner Canyon have uh, our staff mainly by volunteers and only a few uh, paid staff. Again, the, the budget for uh, Elk Creek last year was 5.8 uh, million and uh, 2.3 uh, 2 million and 450,000 respectively for Inner Canyon and North Fork. So I'm not against, at this point, I am not against consolidation what uh, I'm asking for is the real on the ground, uh, uh, the, the on the ground truth in terms of a needs assessment, uh, in terms of an operational and budgetary plan, and then we can make the decision. Right now, we, uh, the um, community members, um, and citizens, the voters who have to decide this thing, are not getting that information, and we won't get that information at these open houses because the information is not uh, available, has not been generated, and uh, the, the uh, fire districts and the fire chiefs are, are not putting that uh, information forward. for or against it? Um, I don't know. Uh, again, like Chuck had mentioned, uh, the information I don't think is, is complete. Um, if we are looking at having paid a paid crew in the North Fork District that runs approximately 250 calls a year, I think they're going to sleep a lot. Um, obviously, there's a mutual aid agreement already in place, and resources are, are there as long as everybody else isn't running calls as well. Um, so, I, again, I don't have all the information, so I don't know whether or not I am for it or against it. I think it's all about cost and benefit. I have gone on record, and I will continue to go on record, that I am in favor of consolidation of the three districts. I'm not looking at um, the number of people in each of the three districts. I'm looking at the needs of the people in the three districts. An example that I can give you fairly quickly is, let's say that Elk Creek is working in an accident on 285. That happens a lot. Um, Inner Canyon gets a call to join them. Okay, That gets happened a lot, but that's a different, that's another call, so the response time comes down. It gets worse. So then you've got North Fork, and let's say they dropped a patient off at um, Swedish, okay, and they're on their way back. They're in the Turkey Creek Canyon. Somebody has a heart attack in Doubleheader, and right now that North Fork ambulance does not know about that heart attack because the call goes to in the canyon, and they're already occupied. So with one central dispatch system, that car, that ambulance coming back from Swedish and Turkey Creek would turn into doubleheader and pick up that patient and take them to the hospital pronto. To me, that is the biggest advantage, is emergency services, ambulance services for consolidating the districts. It's one tone, and you send the, you send the ambulance that's the closest to the incident.
on the surface, and from what I have read, I support moving forward with a consolidation. I have my concerns, but right now, I think my positives outweigh. When you look at consolidating all of those revenue streams, it enables the whole organization to fund necessary capital improvements across the board in a more streamlined capacity. It enables us to provide more staffing and more equipment and more resources across the board. Does Elk Creek subsidize to an extent North Fork? Yeah, they would. But we would also gain their experience in training. They're heavy, as I'm not misunderstanding, they have a lot of high water risk. Todd can explain it better, I think he knows more than I do. The high, um, high water risk training. Inner Canyon has its specialty, Ever Elk Creek has its specialties. It enables the consolidation of all of those specialties. I have a, a radio in my house because of my husband, and there are days where that thing doesn't stop. And I listen to the dispatch times, and they go longer and longer. We've had days where there are call after call after call, and all of Elk Creek's resources are exhausted and inner cannons are exhausted. By having more staff and more availability, it facilitates a stronger, response time and that makes me feel better when my kids are on the field or there's a campfire or there's an accident on 285. Thanks. What I would say is this can be an emotional issue especially when you hear anecdotal examples of what if, what if there's a call at one point on 285 and another place on 285 but the truth is according to this report 93% of the time, there's only one call. That's just the nature of the community that we live in. There's really not a lot of times that there's two incidences at the same time. I mean, as Todd said, there's a call maybe two out of every three to four days in North Fork. That means like 50% of the time, nobody's getting called to do anything. I mean, we would love to have 100 firefighters on call all the time, right? So if something happened, you always have someone there for any possible situation. But this is not a private sector business. This is a government entity. You have to balance the taxpayer resources with the needs of the community, the actual needs of the community. When they talk about consolidation, they say it's, it's going to benefit as if there's going to be more assets. There's going to be the same assets. They're just going to be in a single political entity. There's not going to be more unless they tax more. So if we're talking about increased taxes, let's talk about increased taxes. But the truth is Elk Creek has been running a surplus of a million dollars a year. They're sitting on a $5 million reserve. Elk Creek is in good financial position. So why do we need a tax increase if we do a consolidation? This is my question, and I'm curious. Again, I'm open to being convinced but right now I'm not convinced. Right now I have a lot of questions. What, what is really driving this consolidation? Because they tell you in this report it's not to save money. In fact, they want to raise taxes. Todd will start us off on the fourth question, which is finding volunteers to serve as firefighters is a national issue. What can the Elk Creek Fire Protection District do to recruit more volunteers? That's a great question. Um, to recruit more volunteers. So Elk Creek went into, well, when I was on the department, Elk Creek went into a out-of-district program. Um, that out-of-district program seemed to be a good idea. But then the people that came up from out-of-district were really kind of pointed in one direction, that was to get paid to a paid job. And a lot of training went into those people, 
and then they left and went to another department. To try and recruit more volunteers in our community, which I think is absolutely imperative um, because the people that live in this community know the community, know where the roads are, which is huge in this district. Um, and, you know, me being in a construction stance, if we had multiple calls, I could peel my tools and go to a call. I think that's who we need to be looking at. And there have been many departments out there that have uh, paid per call. I don't know if that is the answer, um, but I think something, there's something. I, I, I know that people enjoy helping their community. I know that citizens like helping each other. I think that's the tact that we would need to take to try and increase the volunteerism. The other piece to it, one minute. The other piece to it is that right now, when you join, as far as I know, without Creek anyway, um, at least from what I remember um, years ago, is that you had to have firefighter, hazmat, first aid and wild land. That doesn't fit in everybody's bag. Some people are really good at medical. Some people are really good at wild land. Some people are really good at fire. So I think if you could utilize the people in the aspect that they can give, then I think you'll get a lot more people that would like to help. I think that you overload people when you have to be Com or, um, good at every single one of those items because typically I think it's roughly 75% I don't know the exact number is mostly medical in this or, or calls in this district the fire calls are less hazmat obviously is, is very slim um, we do have the tankers running up and down the highway so there is always that but if it's something bad state's coming in immediately anyway Sorry. Um, so I don't know a firm answer to the question of how to recruit volunteers. I'm a volunteer on the board. Um, I did get recruited and I'm using my expertise on the board. We're talking about people who are paramedics or EMTs. Um, the last couple weeks, I've had doctor's appointments, and I've actually run into medical assistants at the doctor who are volunteers. They're EMT volunteers for Inner Canyon specifically. So we do recruit people in their specialty. We don't just say, we're recruiting you as a firefighter, and we outfit you as a firefighter. We actually do recruit people within their specialty. Um, I'm actually pretty much at a loss as how to recruit more volunteers. It's not just Elk Creek's problem, it's just not just Inner Canyon, it's not just North Fork, it's the entire nation. Volunteers are down. And in addition, the population in Conifer and the surrounding area is growing, yes, but it's also aging. So it's kind of difficult to say to a person, for example, my age, would you like to be a firefighter? Would you like to be an EMT? I don't have any training, so I would not be a good recruit. Um, I'm sorry, but I don't know a full and firm answer to that question. Any suggestions would be appreciated from the community. This is epidemic across the volunteerism across the nation. The fire service, community hospitals, library programs, PTAs, in-house teaching. Volunteerism is seeing an overall 20% decline in the last 20 years. So this isn't just an Elk Creek problem. Over the course of the last few months, sitting in on the membership meetings at Elk Creek, the chief and his staff have announced 
a variety of programs that are going to reach out to meet people where they are. You don't want to be a firefighter, that's awesome, we need help over here. In my experience with Elk Creek, I have volunteered to make dinners, I have volunteered to make, to enter hours into the national system, or into the state system. There are a lot of opportunities, and I think Chief Ware has done an excellent job over the last year of developing new programs to meet people where they are and encourage volunteerism. Firefighting is hard. The FF1 program requires, the program that Elk Creek runs is over 300 hours of training. And yes, that does include, has, include hazmat and wildland and EMS and firefighter one. But 20 years ago, you only had to have 37 hours of training to become a firefighter. That is not the case anymore. Just to become a firefighter, it's almost 200 hours of training because everything is changing. Chemicals, risk, exposure, all of those things have changed. The environment has changed. And there is also a concern about the medical and emotional risks to firefighters. They have a 250% more likelihood of developing cancers. I don't know about you, but that makes me pause when I'm looking at volunteer activity. So there are a lot of people thinking about this across the nation. Um, and I think Elk Creek is on the right track, and I would like to support them further in meeting people where they are for those volunteers and recruits. So one of the hats that I wore over the last 20-some years in Conifer is that I was the GC on my house when it was being constructed. And this is probably where I met 99% of the volunteer firemen that I've met. They were plumbers and electricians and concrete guys and framers in our community. I think that is the best source of volunteers, people that are tied to the community, people that are small businessmen who own their own time, that, like Todd said, can put down their hammer and run to an accident or run to a fire, and they're connected to the community. My concern about staffed firemen that come up from Denver and get the training is that's their profession now. They're not an electrician who's a volunteer fireman, they're a professional fireman. And guess what, when Conifer doesn't pay very well, they might leave and use all that training and go work for Denver Metro or Colorado Springs or Fort Collins and make a better living. The truth is we need to depend on a volunteer-based fire department. And one thing that I read in this report, and I don't know, I mean, this is what this report says, but it says there's tension between our volunteer firemen and our staffed firemen, that they're being underutilized under call to activities, having a hard time getting in their hours. This to me sounds like something that would drive volunteers away, where they feel like, I'm gonna get all this training, I'm gonna be a volunteer, I'm gonna be connected to my community, and then I never get called. I don't get paid for incidences. This seems like something that maybe we need to look at operationally within our fire department to make sure that we are using those volunteers so they feel rewarded for the time they're putting in, in training, and in expertise to learn how to respond to these calls. And of course, obviously, compensation, healthcare benefits, these are things that we can look at in terms of attracting volunteers. But to go into the communities that are more likely to produce volunteer firemen, which are our tradesmen, right? Anyway, that's what I think about recruiting volunteers. Yeah, I, I resonate uh, with what uh, Todd and, and Deb have uh, said here. I, I think uh, that we need to reach out to uh, trades people in, in the community uh, because the, these are the people that, that have the volunteer spirit, they care about their community. And I think uh, uh, also uh, meeting people where they are uh, where they work and um, uh, a lot more, we need to do a lot more outreach. Uh, I think we've really uh, uh, sort of fallen down there. So um, I, I would uh, agree with what Todd and uh, Deb have said here. Sharon will start us off on the fifth question. The Shadow Mountain Bike Park is being proposed in the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. And if approved by Jefferson County, the developers promise to have medical personnel on staff. However, it is likely the bike park will regularly use Elk Creek Fire's emergency medical services. 
If elected, what will you do to help the district address balancing the bike park's use of emergency medical services with the need to answer calls for district residents? That's a pretty much a hypothetical at this point because the bike park has just completed their application and Jefferson County has not approved the bike park at this point. Um, whether you're for or against the bike park, it is possible that there will be accidents when, with people coming down the hills at the bike park. Currently, we have overlapping calls, and those could certainly pose more overlapping calls. That brings to mind to me that part of what we're proposing as the consolidation is that there would be more resources and eventually more paid resources, not just volunteers, more paid resources to answer those calls. So Inner Canyon is not that far from the bike park. Obviously Elk Creek is very close to the bike park. So there are resources that could answer calls at the bike park. One of the things with consolidation again is reducing the response time for all calls, and that would include calls in the bike park. That's really all I have. Thank you. The bike park has been such a touchy issue in the community, and it is so very hypothetical because it is just at the beginning of its process again. Living off of Shadow Mountain, I would pass the bike park location two to three, four times a day. The knowledge that the bike park that would have staff on site would, to me, be critical, given the nature of, the, of what they are offering. It would also, in my opinion, not as significantly impact the department given that most of those EMTs can handle a lot of the calls that are going to come down. And so it would result in transport for those serious calls. That's where you kick in with your volunteers who have the ability to run a call down. Would it impact the staffing time? Hypothetically, it could. But hypothetically, a lot of developments in the community could impact staffing response time 365 days a year, as opposed to the bike park that is open for only a seasonal aspect. Okay, it's the bike park. I don't know that much about it, but obviously if we had a big recreational facility in Conifer with people coming up from the flatlands to come play in our beautiful community on their bikes, People would get hurt and there'd be increased call volume. I don't know if you look at user fees for people at the bike park to help subsidize the cost of it, but if there was increased volume, we'd have to respond accordingly. And that's why Elk Creek would have to look at their financials and have to look at their resources and potentially take on more firemen that are EMTs, right? But again, why would consolidation help us with the bike park? Are we gonna call someone from North Fork to come up and help if there's an incident at the bike park? I don't think so. Again, one plus one plus one is three. We're adding together three districts. It does not equal seven. It's the same number of resources. If we wanna hire more people and invest more resources, let's talk about that. But consolidation does not create more resources. So uh, the, the issue of the bike park is representative of uh, some of the large scale developments that are proposed for the uh, Collar for Aspen Park um, area. And uh, so uh, there, it, it, as it stands now, the bike park has a high likelihood of being approved by uh, Jefferson County uh, Planning and Zoning. Uh, their track record for approving um, large-scale developments is, uh, is pretty high. So what would that mean for uh, the Elk Creek uh, Fire District? 
Well, uh, similar sized uh, downhill bike parks uh, like this one, um, uh, the, the statistics say that uh, there will be about one call every day or every other day. Uh, and with uh, the 30% overlapping calls that we have uh, today uh, in the Elk Creek District, uh, that means that um, there will be a significant impact on the Elk Creek uh, District. Now, uh, so far we have not, um, we have seen a, a, quite a, a number of details uh, in regard to the proposal, but uh, so far we have not um, seen any real um, uh, effort on the part of the uh, 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 applicants to compensate Elk Creek. So, uh, uh, I would uh, ask that um, um, if, if I'm re-elected, uh, that uh, we look into uh, impact fees or uh, user fees, uh, but it's clear to me that uh, there will be a significant impact to Elk Creek and uh, that Elk Creek is, is going to have to get uh, uh, compensated for its expenses. And it, it, it can't, and, and also we need to understand they pay no taxes because that bike park is on state land and uh, they do not pay any um, uh, mill levy fees to the fire district. So we have to be aggressive, I believe, uh, as a district to um, ensure that, that we get compensated for our expenses, whether that means hire, um, hiring. Um, uh, 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 an ambulance crew buying an ambulance, um, but we need to be aggressive to to hold the taxpayers harmless on this commercial enterprise. So I don't uh, think that I'm in favor of the bike park simply because I think the access getting to the bike park is going to be. Um, probably the biggest effect to this district. That residential area um, is going to see a, a, an amazing amount of traffic, and that road is is extremely narrow and very um, very tight turns. So I think that you know the the potential of injuries on the bike at the bike park itself is probably um, definitely going to be something that happens. Um, However, I think the, the biggest impact would be on the roadways going to the bike park, which would be a deterrent for my, for my take on this. Um, I think it's gonna increase call volume immensely, and I think the residents are gonna um, be having to deal with quite a bit of traffic. Um, and I don't think it's a great idea at this point until there's a, a better plan to accommodate for those kinds of things. So that's where I stand on Okay, so we have time for one more question before closing statements. We'll just start back with Dominique. Um, so since board members have to, sorry, since board members have a fiduciary responsibility to the taxpayers of the district, if elected, what metrics would you use to determine the appropriate budget for the district, including allocation of resources? I have watched Elk Creek over the course of 15 years make difficult decisions and light year changes in their budget. When my husband started, I think they had a couple hundred thousand in reserves and were literally operating on budget to budget. What I have seen change over the years has been an increase in revenue and in both tax based and from their wild land module. I have seen debt paid off. I have seen better billing systems to recover expenses from ambulance traffic. Um, I have seen stronger investment portfolio for them and I would love to help them realize 
an even stronger investment portfolio. Many, many people don't understand that Title 32 is fixed on how it can invest, and there are specific organizations, um, College Trust and CSAFE specifically, that help organizations like Elk Creek expand on their revenue-based product. Um, I lost my train of thought. See how easily that happens? Um, but one thing I want everybody to keep in mind and share with your, with your circle of friends is that while Elk Creek has five million in reserves, one fire truck eats up a million plus. And we have multiple fire trucks in the district that have far surpassed their usable life. Big Bird, my husband's favorite truck, you see it in the Christmas parade, is 1989. It has far surpassed its usable life and needs to be replaced. Right now, to buy a truck comparable is over a million dollars. While it seems like there's a lot of revenue sitting in reserves, it's not a lot when you consider the expenses associated with running a successful fire department. I largely agree with that. In terms of looking at the district financially representing the taxpayers, you look at what are your core responsibilities of, as a fire department? Where, where are your needs in equipment, training, personnel, um, in your fire trucks and in your ambulances? In, I mean, I was reading about these self-moving cots that the fire department has. You make sure that they have the resources that they need to do the job. Um, Actually, when they were assessing in this report about the condition of the fire trucks, shockingly, most of them were in pretty good condition. Now, a million dollars is a lot of money, but my guess is those trucks last about 20 years. So if we buy another truck, we're good for a while. I guess my point being that if I'm elected, my responsibility is to make sure this fire district is adequately funded, that they are buying the resources they need, to pursue their operational responsibilities so that homeowners and renters, whatever, are being well served and that we can respond to whatever emergencies come up in this district. But also that we're not wasting money on lawyers and consultants, et cetera. And as a lawyer, I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I, I think in, in terms of uh, the budget, process, the budgeting process, the budget needs, it, it all starts with a, uh, a, a mission critical needs analysis. Uh, one of the things that I've done on the board uh, is ask for a strategic plan. Uh, the Elk Creek uh, Fire District does not have a strategic plan in place right now. Uh, we did a work session a, a few weeks back to uh, get a plan to get a plan, basically. Uh, but it starts with a, a, a mission critical needs assessment. And then the next step is to do an operational plan uh, and a budgetary plan. Uh, so uh, I, I think we need, uh, if, if I'm uh, re-elected to the board, uh, I, I will push for uh, a strategic plan and, uh, and, and a, a strict uh, uh, Budgetary, uh, uh, budgetary plan against uh, a strategic needs, and uh, I, I think that's uh, uh, that's what I'll be working on going forward. What Chuck said is is right on. Um, I think strategic strategic plan is is critical um, to know what is coming up in the future, future costs of vehicles, um, what we're going to need to um, have to run calls personnel-wise. There's always new gear that's coming out that makes everybody safer, um, which is you know, something we should definitely be looking at as well. Um, Big Bird is not 1989, um, but it is, it is very old. Um, great truck. And pump some water. Um, but uh, yeah, it is old and it probably does need to be replaced 
at some point. I don't know if it's this year, but I think you know if we had somebody that looked at it, I don't think we have a maintenance person anymore. I think we might be looking at one now. Um, but taking care of the apparatus that we have is, is key. Um, so I think physically we just need to see what the strategic plan is and or at least get one um, so that we know the path forward and to do it fiscally responsibly. Um, I don't want to see this department be short on resources by any means. Um, I raise three kids, like I said, I drive these highways every day. I drive by accidents. The speed on 285 has increased by probably 15 miles an hour um, in the last 20 years. The volume of traffic that comes through during the summertime is absolutely immense. So to have um, the stuff that the department needs, this, the taxpayers, the citizens need, is key. Um, so I, I would definitely be looking at you know making sure that we are in a good response um, for anything that comes at us. It's really not my opinion to disagree with everybody that's up here because we do need a strategic plan. As a financial analyst in a farmer life, um, I spend a lot of time on strategic plans and I believe in our strategic meeting on the 27th of March that we actually did set down some goals to come up with at least the first pass on a strategic plan that involved machinery, that involved Big Bird, I would assume, and that involved the other particular ambulances and things like that that are aging. And it is very important for us to realize that a few years ago, a fire engine was 600,000, it's now over a million dollars. So. Five million doesn't necessarily go very far. I'm glad we have that in reserves. I'm glad we have that available. As was mentioned earlier, we are prohibited in terms of what we can invest those monies in. We have our money at a company, a bank, basically called Colorado Trust. They are diligent in determining what we can invest in, and they look at it every day in terms of whether we are investing in things that we should invest in. But I agree, we need some sort of strategic plan, but that doesn't just include machinery, it includes personnel. We need to be able to not just recruit volunteers, but we need to be able to hire competent firefighters, EMTs, paramedics, those kinds of people. So that costs money. Sometimes Elk Creek is not competitive, with Denver Metro or with, I don't know, probably most of Colorado Springs, probably uh, the other bigger cities. So some of the things that attract people to come to Elk Creek is our wildland. People in the middle of Denver don't necessarily have issues with wildland fires, but we do. So definitely personnel, and machinery are important in setting a strategy to make sure that we provide the resources that are needed to this community. Thank you. Okay, so now it's time for the candidates' closing statements. The order was drawn out of some Tupperware. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Chuck drew number one, so it starts off. So, <clears throat> In, in closing here, uh, I, I think it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's clear that the community needs and the community deserves uh, a fire district that's focused on its core mission. And that core mission is uh, to provide uh, excellent emergency medical services, uh, exceptional firefighting capability, and um, a fire district that uh, reaches out to the community with firefighting and EMS related educational uh, programs. But in order to do that, we need to have uh, a strategic plan. Uh, what is uh, in the firefighting community called a standards of coverage. And basically what, 
what those plans are is um, uh, it starts with a uh, again a mission critical needs assessment, um, and then a the development of, of a set of operational uh, and business uh, process plans uh, against those core mission services, uh, and then a a budget and uh, the uh, management. Um, uh, structures put in place to make sure that uh, we are measuring uh, how we are doing against our plans, both operational and uh, uh, business and budgetary plans, and then um, importantly, getting out and connecting with the community to understand uh, what the community's needs are, how they may be changing, uh, how the demographics are changing, how our call experience is changing, how our personnel are meeting uh, their everyday challenges. Uh, in, unless you have a strategic plan and, and the processes in place to carry out uh, the strategic plan and the uh, uh, standards of coverage, you don't know where you are and you don't know where you're going. So, uh, uh, if I'm reelected, I will work uh, towards making sure that the community is well served by putting those processes in place. Now it goes to Sharon and then Todd. Thank you. We do have a budget. Um, I actually worked with Chief Ware to put that budget together. The amount of revenue we receive is over 60% determined by the property taxes in the Jefferson County hands to us. We have an expense budget. We have a continuous look at that budget every each and every month because I provide, if anybody comes to our meetings, um, I provide a look at a monthly and year-to-date budget of key metrics that we measure. Those would include wages, um, not just the wages, but all the benefits associated with wages. So a total look at wages. We look at capital expenditures. We look at what's coming. We look at what could be coming. We look at all of those things on a monthly basis. So I think we do a good job of keeping track of the budget, of understanding the budget, of understanding deviations from the budget, and we review that every month in our board meetings. So if any of you want to come look at that, I present that every month without fail. Even when I was sick in January, I was at the board meeting presenting the budget. So we present actuals against the budget, we present the amount that we have that's coming up, the amount of deviations, all of those budgeting key items are reviewed with the community, either on Zoom, if you're on our Zoom link, or in person on a monthly basis at the board meetings. So again, the strategic plan, I think, is, is essential. Um, knowing where the department's going, um, if it's going into a consolidation, um, knowing what that cost is going to be over the outlay, um, and planning for the tax revenues that are gonna to need to be generated for that um, prior to asking for a tax going towards a district that you have zero plan with, or what the cost is going to be. Um, I recently went to a board meeting and there was a motion brought to the board so that there would be a, a new truck for slash um, for chipping. Uh, there was no discussion whatsoever. It was a hundred and fifty thousand dollar expenditure, and nobody discussed it. I think fiscal responsibility requires us to discuss it. Um, we have one now. Uh, obviously, it's it's older. Um, but there's not any discussion. We spent $150,000. Um, 
I think that we need to look at those things and we have uh, over five million dollars and we haven't bought a truck. I'm fairly confident the last um, mill levy that was put forth was to buy equipment and Big Bird's still there. So I don't know why Big Bird hadn't been replaced. Um, there's plenty of money to replace Big Bird. So I think that fiscal responsibility, I, like I said before, I've been in this community for over 30 years. I've paid taxes, I volunteered. I want this department and this community to have all the things that it needs. But I think we need to really look at it. And there's been multiple people talking about hiring more people and I, I, again, you know, we're looking at maybe recruiting volunteers, but I think we're really looking at closely at hiring more paid staff. And I think that we should be looking at every opportunity first before we start going out and hiring a bunch of people. You're never going to keep up with the Denver Metro. We run approximately 1,300 calls in this district. Um, Denver's not running 1,300 calls. Uh, they, they get paid well there. And, you know, I think to compete with that, you're going to have to have a heck of a lot more calls to be able to cover that kind of expense. So um, I think everything needs to be on the table and the citizens need to be represented and not just um, looking at one potential solution. Goes to Deb and then Dominique. Um, what I would say in summary is I do agree with Chuck and with Todd that strategically you have to look in terms of financial planning. <coughs> what are your assets? When do they need replaced? Of course there's always surprises, but for the most part you should have a strategic plan on when you're replacing your ambulances, your personal equipment, your self-rolling cots, etc. That kind of stuff needs to be planned out at least five years out. This is something that the fire district should be doing from the board level. And there should be transparency in terms of the financials to the community so that you guys know what you're voting for. I would encourage anyone in the community to read this. I mean, it'll take you like two weeks, but there's a lot of really good information in here. I learned a lot about our fire districts by reading this. And at the end of the day, we have to balance our taxpayers with our emergency service personnel. One thing that we are looking at, I mean, you can read it in the Denver Post, is they're about to reassess all of our homes based on the fictional inflated values of last summer. This is not realized gains. Everyone's about to get a tax increase because they're gonna say that our homes are worth more than they're worth today. And on top of that, we're talking about to consolidate, they want another four mills. I mean, that will make us apparently one of the highest tax fire districts in the state of Colorado. 16 mills is higher than 250 other districts across the state. There's people on fixed incomes that are now paying double the cost for natural gas and propane every month. Everything is more expensive. And we have to therefore look at our citizens and look at our fire department and we have to make common sense decisions. Spend money where it's needed. If it's needed for a new truck, we buy a new truck. But my guess is we don't need to enrich lawyers and consultants on another 400 page report. That was a lot of information that was just provided to you from everywhere. The topics covered a breadth of the consolidation in the bike park, but there's so much more going on than the consolidation in the bike park for the fire department. I encourage you in the coming days to read more, look out for more resources, reach out to your candidates. I encourage you to share your information with your neighbors and your circle of friends. Get the word out about how important this coming election is to the voters. I feel that my understanding of the nuances of finance and operation of special districts will benefit the district in the long run. 
It isn't operated like a private organization. It doesn't run like a corporation. It's accountancy or in its processes. My experience in negotiating benefits platforms and leveraging those programs would only benefit the paid and volunteer staff. I believe my training in leadership, public sector management, and organizational processes will help the district and its community move through the coming years. My commitment to you as a resident of this community is to increase communications and education, to utilize federal programs such as FEMA's Fire is Everyone's Fight, to maintain and expand our current community wildfire protection plan. With only 3% of the community voting in last year's election for the board positions, it is so very important to vote. You hear this both on local elections and on national elections, but for you, this is important. These decisions and these directions will impact you. In the coming years, finances, whether we consolidate or not, staffing, those are all issues that are going to face us. Ultimately, the decision for consolidation rests with you. The board is advisory on that. Reach out to each candidate. I know we all have cards and flyers and websites and Facebook pages. Ask your questions. Share your concerns. This is local governance at its finest, and you have six people sitting in front of you asking for your vote. Please make sure it's an educated one. All right, so again, the election will be in oh, person, yes, <laughs> in person from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., May 2nd, at Elk Creek Fire Station 1. Um, I also wanted to say thanks to everyone for bearing with me. As an editor, I'm used to working behind the scenes. I'm not much of a public speaker. Um, thank you to the candidates for being here, and most of all, thank you to all of you for being active in your community and for attending this forum. I think that concludes things for tonight.